welcome to the 2017 Global Dialogue on Waste. Um, the, the, the first time I came across um, your uh, organization, I was really impressed, you know, what you're doing. Um, and um, let's just um, get it out, um, you know, get the age thing out. You know, um, it's really impressive that at this age you're able to do all of this. But then I don't think that really means um, anything else other than that, other than the point that you started so early in your life doing something like this. So um, congratulations on that. And uh, so um, can you um, tell us a little bit more about what you're doing, how you started and when you started um, and why you felt like you had to do this? Yeah, so we started One More Generation about um, almost eight years ago. And our goal was to save endangered species at the time. Uh, we had been adopting cheetahs, our aunt had been, um, and we kind of just felt that if we wanted our children to be able to see these same species and these same animals and the environment that we're living in today, we had to do something. We had to change the way we were, you know, buying things or, um, you know, supporting different organizations. And we felt that that was a huge need in society today because we're seeing, like, a decrease in, like, empathy for, like, animals and the environment. And it's kind of sad, but we felt that if we could teach people and teach, you know, students how to care for things that they don't know about, then we could, like, change the world, like, you know, even if it's small parts at a time, um, it'd make a huge lasting effect. So that was the main reason we started uh, One More Generation, and we started mainly just because of endangered species. Right. And um, why did you uh, think you had to teach people? I mean, um, what was it going to achieve for you? Um, the reason why we wanted to <clears throat> teach um, people was because if we don't start changing um, our environment and the way we live now, it's just going to go downhill from here. Right, right. Uh, that's a very quick, um, succinct answer. Um, so um, th this is one of the questions that I have. So in the 1990s, when um, you know world leaders came together for you know the uh, um, UN summit in Rio to talk about climate change and the future generations and sustainable development, you know they were talking about um, doing all of this for our future generations in the 90s, and um, I think um, they were you know actually talking about you guys. You know you, you're the future generation and you're already here and now you know you're um, old enough to have your own opinions and you know be able to um, you know talk about what's going on and you know ha have your own views on it so um, I wanted to um, find out from you you know what do you think of the current progress that that has happened when it comes to the environment or um, or to waste management or you know to the plastics problems that you work with you know what do you think about the progress you know what kind of viewpoint do you have can can both of you talk about it for a while? Yeah. Um, so I think that the the progress is, um, I don't know how to exactly describe it. I think it's like a little bit uh, slow. It could be going a little bit, you know, faster. But I think that um, when we go to schools and stuff and we try to teach about, you know, plastic pollution or like animals and stuff, we think that a lot of people don't know about it. A lot of people don't know about these problems that, we are seeing and it's proven that you don't care about what you don't know about so that's the whole point of what we're trying to do is if we teach people about like you know these specific issues then they can have more care for it. they can look at their life differently and see how they can make a change and how they can maybe speed up the process of getting these like organizations to you know be better stewards of the planet right and um olivia um i agree with that if we don't educate the youth um like i said earlier it's going to go downhill and um because of the environment today and um different government issues it's just it's kind of not the how do i explain it um, kind of not the way that we should be living right right so it could be much faster um, and um, more people could do more about, you know, what's going on, right? And um, Olivia, so what do you think um, could be the reasons why, you know, this is so slow? Um, one reason is maybe people aren't, well, of course, there are tons of people who don't know about this, but um, I think that 
if people don't know about it, the adults should start to learn and then go ahead and teach their kids or the other way around. What we encourage is that kids teach and then they go and teach their parents and teach their friends and stuff like that. But um, one reason is that um, maybe some schools don't um, involve a certain environmental teaching program or something teaching about what you can and cannot reflect, but even if it's just like an hour lesson. Um, another reason is, um, of course, like I said a minute ago, the government, um, the new government, um, they despised of Obama's um, peace treaty um, or the environment treaty that he made in Paris. And um, so um, that was that was um, leading to helping the environment as well, but they got rid of it. So um, that's one of the reasons why it's kind of slowing down. Right, right. Um, makes sense. So, um, all right. And um, so uh, talking about Instagram, uh, I mean, Olivia and uh, um, Chanel, none of them are on Instagram, uh, are on Twitter or anything else. They're only on Instagram. So, and you were telling me that, you know, that's, that's big. So um, should um, tell us a little bit about, you know, that and also tell us uh, a little bit about other tools, not just social media, but also storytelling or other kinds of tools that you use to engage people. Like, how do you talk to them? You know, what kind of methods or what kind of tools do you use to, you know, communicate your message? So uh, we like, I, okay. Okay. Um, we like um, to do social media a lot, of course. We use Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, I'm not sure if we use any others. I, I don't think so, but those are our main big three, and we're able to spread the message quite fast, you know, because of the internet. Um, but we also feel it's very effective when we go and teach people, um, like actually in person, when we can go and have like a little stand or something and just, you know, give the message out. We think it's a lot more powerful for someone to hear from like youth voices to other youth that they can make a difference and that this is not only our world, but it's their world, and it's gonna be their future like generation, like their kids, their grandkids, it's gonna be all their planet too. Um, we feel like art is also definitely a huge thing that we do. Uh, we have a pangolin awareness campaign, and we have this giant um, 12 by eight art sculpture, um, sorry, mural, and we get people to put on like scales of this pangolin animal, and um, so it's just showing that there's so many different ways you can talk to people. You don't have to talk. You don't have to send a message. It can be through art as well and just a visual. A visual can make all the difference as well. Um, also, to add on to kind of what Carter's trying to say is that um, because of the kids nowadays, they grow up with all the technology, all resources that they need right on their phones, cell phones, tablets, TVs. And um, so we use... Um, um, Instagram and Twitter and mostly Instagram because um, younger kids nowadays um, more have the, that platform um, to teach and raise awareness about different issues that are going on with hashtags, um, different um, accounts and things like that along with our art campaign. So our Pangolin campaign has that hashtag of um, every five minutes because the Pangolin is being hurt every five minutes. Um, or is being killed every five minutes. So using hashtags can get people more interested in different um, projects that we're doing. And maybe that um, they can, and also a great thing about Instagram is that you can actually text or basically it's kind of like a small email platform where you can um, tell people about um, or ask us questions about how they can get involved and different things like that. Um, so um, can you... Um, uh... Well, uh, so can you talk a little bit about um, your experiences, um, you know, talking to different people? Um, I know you've um, stopped uh, usage of straws and uh, plastic lids in um, a, a big facility. Um, so can you talk about those experiences, you know, what kind of change you brought um, by now and uh, what kind of experiences you have talking to people? So um, right now we're working on the One Less Straw Pledge campaign where we're asking people to sign a pledge saying that they won't use a plastic straw for 30 days, but instead they can use paper straws, glass straws, or any kind of re renewable source. The reason it, uh, for this is because 
In America alone, we use over 500 million plastic straws every day, and none of them ever get recycled. I'm trying to create awareness about that with um, different, we're partnered up with Delta um, Airlines, and we're trying to get them to reduce the amount of plastic they use on their airlines as well as plastic straws that they hand out. Um, so we uh, met with them a couple, excuse me, a couple weeks ago to um, meet up with them to discuss um, different uses for straws, um, stirring sticks, salt shaker and pepper shakers, different things like that, packaging. And um, the reason uh, for that is that um, because these are only single use items and they get usually thrown away and none of them are really recycled or can be able to or able to be recycled. So um, that's just the one less straw pledge that we're working on. And we usually get strong feedback. We um, get a lot of people accepting like what we're trying to teach. And when that happens, it's so much easier you know, to teach the people because they're open-minded. Um, sometimes we get people who aren't especially open-minded, but we can usually convince them when we give them all the statistics and all the facts and, you know, a lot of people do care for animals, so when we bring that into the picture, it also shows them that this is not only affecting the environment, but also affecting you, animals, pets, I mean, basically everything. Right, right. And um, so um, can, can you tell uh, people who are watching, uh, let me just um, remind them that, uh, you know, uh, we're, watching the, um, we're watching Olivia and Carter Rice. Um, for uh, the 20, in the 2017 Global Dialogue on Race, and they're talking about their uh, nonprofit One More Generation and uh, about their activities um, through that nonprofit. So, uh, if you have any questions um, or comments, you can put uh, use the Q and A box below the screen, and you can um, submit them um, to be answered. So, um, so back to you again. So, can can you tell people who are watching how they can? Take the um, one less plastic, um, one less uh, straw campaign. Uh, how, how can they? How they can take the challenge? And in addition to that, if not that, how else can they get um, involved in uh, you know environmental activism? So well, we what have they can a, do. Oh, okay. Sorry, um, we have a one less straw a pledge campaign uh, or, like website. So it's one less straw dot org, and if you go on there, you'll see three different sections. One will be individual pledge, then the school pledge, and then business pledge. Uh, the individual, you can sign up. Um, that just basically says that you are going straw-free for 30 days. Well, plastic straw-free. You can use, like, glass straws or metal straws or bamboo. There's so many different resources that you can use. Um, the school is where you get students to go to school, get your school signed up. And during a week, you get people to – you get the faculty and staff – to give all the students a signature, an individual signature, and they can sign that. But then the, the students are tasked to go home and get their parents to sign it as well. This creates like a ripple effect, and it'll spread the message more and more. And then the business pledge is for any business, really. Um, we get restaurants as well to uh, sign on saying that they will only serve straws upon request. So they won't just blindly hand out the straw so that they're not using an excessive amount and they're saving money by not using straws that people don't use. Uh, we've also have a website, onemoregeneration.org, and you can find all our animal campaigns. You can find a link towards onelessstraw.org, and you can find out different ways that you can get involved with the environment and animal conservation. Um, Olivia, did you have something to say? Oh, no, he basically covered it all. Okay, okay. And um, all right, and um, also uh, talk a little bit about um, your generation. I mean, um, you know, uh, people who are not in your generation, like all the older people, you know, we have um, a lot of, uh, I guess, misconceptions about it. So tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, how, how your generation is responding to, you know, the planetary scale challenges that we have, you know, how, how you talk to each other about this. And can you talk about that a little bit? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. basically, um, we're, what we need to do is what people need to work harder on different schools is educating the youth because the youth is the key to um, solving most of our problems. And um, so the reason why is because um, then they'll go home and they'll become the teachers in the family and they'll teach, like I said earlier, the parents 
their friends and stuff like that. And it just spreads. It's kind of like a ripple effect um, of teaching in a fun way. But um, we also need the um, older ed um, older generation to, <clears throat> to educate themselves about the issue. Like Carter said, you don't care about what you don't know about. And um, the reason um, why for that is because the older generation won't care about what the newer, newer generation um, is talking about because they are the ones who made the problem. We do feel that the younger generation usually does, you know, um, respond pretty well because when you've got other peers talking and showing that they can make a difference, it really is kind of empowering to the students. I remember when um, I used to have lectures at my school and, you know, grown-ups would come up and talk and, if it was a subject I was really interested in, yeah, I like I always wanted to listen to people talk, but you could see that other kids were, you know, like yeah. bored and they were like like slower at catching things. Um, but if you can make it like a presentation a little shorter and give them all the information they need, they usually can grasp it. Uh, so I think that they're taking it really well. The older generation is taking it pretty well as well. At the beginning they weren't because you know, we were really young kids, and they said, what do you know about stuff that I don't already know about? Um, but now that we've gotten a little older and we're more influential than um, than we used to be, they start to listen to us a little bit better. Right, and um, um, so from, um, from, from your hindsight, from your experience doing this for a while now, um, what are your suggestions for someone who would like to start, uh, you know, something like what you're doing, like a nonprofit or do something on their own? Like, where do they start and what should they do, do not do? Like, what does your hindsight say? If, if someone comes to you for advice, you know, what would you tell them? I think, um, yeah, either one of you can start and I want both of you to talk about this. They should definitely um, be passionate. Of course, if they're very passionate about it, they should go out. Of course, tell other people about it. Tell their parents until, because I remember coming home telling my dad, oh, I'm so excited about this, and he would just go over his head. Uh, Cause um, and I just kept telling him and telling him. One day, um, it kind of finally stuck with him, and he's like, "Oh, I see how passionate you guys are. Let me help you out with that." And um, definitely try to get the message out there. If you're passionate about something, follow your heart, um, and just try to help other people or get pe other people to help you. Um, I also want to say that. Whatever you're passionate about, it doesn't have to be environment, it doesn't have to be animals, it could be youth empowerment, it could be anything. Just, you know, go through with it. If you're really passionate about it and you know this is something that you want to do, don't stop at just telling yourself that. You really have to go through, like Olivia said, and tell everyone you know. Because that's what we had to do. We had to tell our teachers, we had to tell our parents, we had family members. You know, and finally it happened. So, I mean, that could happen to anybody. Right, great. Thank you, um, um, Olivia and Carter. Um, I, I, I feel like I, I um, woke um, Olivia very early in the morning. So, <laughs> sorry. sorry about that. I've been yawning the entire time. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, that's cool. So yeah, uh, sorry about that. But thank you very much for your time. I mean, greatly appreciate what you guys are doing and uh, what you had to say. I think that was um, really insightful. Um, so um, let's um, then move on to the next session with uh, Madison. She's already here. And um, thank you very much for your time and all the best with your um, campaigns. And one last time, could you tell us uh, where everyone could go? Um, you can go to our website at one moregeneration.org or the one less straw.org page and sign the pledge. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, um, both of you. H have a good day. Thank you, you too.